Yeah, you know, if you go back uh, over a month, we've been asking Speaker Pelosi to bring the bill that went out of the Senate unanimously. Uh, she was holding the bill, then she was trying to play games with the bill. Last week, we called them out. I, during my colloquy, asked uh, Leader Hoyer if he would bring the bill up unamended uh, so that we can get it to the president's desk quickly, especially on the heels of a man arrested for trying to kill Justice Kavanaugh. And I know Leader McCarthy expressed the same urgency to Speaker Pelosi. So hopefully we finally get that bill on the floor clean. It will pass overwhelmingly. I think you'll see the lion's share of Republicans and Democrats vote for that bill. It just begs the question, why did Speaker Pelosi delay it for over a month? Yes. We're expecting possibly tomorrow a SCOTUS uh, on the uh, fate of Roe. If the leak does prove correctly, your reaction to Roe being overturned and saving the lives of the unborn? Well, I'm hopeful that the Supreme Court overturns the, the bad precedent that Roe set and allows elected leaders to make these decisions on how best to protect life, you know, whether it be members of Congress or state legislatures who have already been having robust debates in these last few weeks. So uh, I'm hopeful that they come up with that ruling. It hasn't come out yet, uh, so I don't want to be presumptuous. Um, I continue to pray uh, for the right ruling and I pray for the health and safety of the Supreme Court justices and their families uh, with you know, what right now is, is a lack of enforcement of federal law by the Justice Department. And when is the Justice Department to enforce federal law to protect those justices and their families at their homes? Some on the Senate side are calling for President Biden to address this issue to the American people that they should be prosecuted. Yeah, it's, it's interesting why President Biden's been silent on uh, death threats on, I mean, he was, he was even earlier, you know, weeks ago, encouraging people to go to the houses of Supreme Court justices when it's a violation of federal law to try to threaten, bully, and intimidate uh, a judge of any kind to, to change their opinion on, a, on an issue before the court. Well, look, you've seen a number of states go and fix their laws in, in the states where you had some of those problems. Not all states have, uh, but, you know, you're still con continuing to see states try to address and strengthen their election integrity. And, and I would encourage them all to have that conversation. We had that in Louisiana uh, years ago when I was a state representative. You know, we had blatant election fraud. In fact, our elections commissioner went to jail and ultimately we cleaned up that office. I was one of the authors of the bill that helped clean the office up and we've had fair elections ever since. Not always producing the outcome we want, but fair. And uh, again, people went to jail along the way for violations of uh, prior infractions that we cleaned up. So, you know, I know the Democrats wanna keep talking about January 6th every day. That's not something you hear American people talking about. They want Washington to be focused on the things that are hurting families today, and that is inflation, gas prices, and a border crisis. Just last yeah. Question. Yeah, I guess just to follow up on that, though, when you hear the former attorney general and other former administration officials say that the former president's fraudulent claims were, you know, BS, silly, bogus, nuts, do any of you on the stage who objected to certifying the results of the election have any regrets about that vote? Look, you saw some states not follow their state, uh, state passed legislation. I mean, the Constitution doesn't say states determine how to pick electors. It says state legislatures determine how to pick electors. That's something that the Constitution is very clear about. Uh, that wasn't followed in all cases. But ultimately, there are some people that want to keep relitigating uh, 2020. Uh, I think if you look at most families across America, they're angry about the failures of President Biden, and they want to see this Congress start addressing those problems instead of just continuing this perpetual hatred of President Trump and using their time and primetime hearings to go after President Trump. I, I still beg the question, when is there going to be a primetime hearing by Speaker Pelosi on the inflation crisis across America or on high gas prices or on the border crisis? in this country. They won't he have the hearings because they don't want to address those problems. We've laid out over and over how to solve these problems. It's not complicated. Uh, they just don't want to work with Republicans to address it. And that's unfortunate because it's hurting families and will continue to through this hot summer. With that, thank you.